Yeah, um, and they're just, and they're now, just keep neat in mind, guy. keep in mind, these are over two miles away from each other. Okay. Right. And they're so, about one mile from each, you know, from our location. Uh, actually, yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, let's see. That's pretty here. convenient. See, that's, that's six, 6,800 feet, so a mile and a quarter. And mm. then that's approximately a full mile. So, yeah. So, yes, the, um, uh, the officer, uh, the, the lieutenant, uh, goes back to his car and he pulls out a map of, of, uh, of this area. It looks strangely <laughs> like the one that you're, you're, you're at, except for this this okay except for these i'm sure okay yeah. <laughs> so that's what you get and he he takes a a little uh magic marker and marks off each one okay and and uh he did give you the address already dogfight uh okay so mo we just kind of went over what you wanted to do chris Chris, I'm thinking. <laughs> well, oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Peaches, Peaches gets out her 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 iPad or or whatever device she's got and films the scene. Okay. Do you have an iPad? Is it that one that you got uh, in France? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, sure. Does it, it, it? I don't even know if it's if it connects any kind of Wi-Fi or signal here, but it should be able to power up. I should be able to maybe take a photo of the crowd as well. Okay. Kind of do a pan and scan. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, no, no problem. You can do a kind of a pan and scan and, and you, there are very few faces out there. It's mainly just the police officers, the forensics team, uh, and probably five or six, uh, you know, passersby. Uh, maybe one or two of those are from the hotel itself because it's still kind of early in the morning. Yeah, well, pop, uh, um, pop culture typically says that uh, murderers like to watch. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's pop culture, though. <laughs> yeah, so, um, or at least I heard it on TV, but that, that's the only detective thing I know. So I'm going to also we, the, the camera might catch something that, that we've missed that we can look later. Okay. So, uh, um, but, but I'm not going to be waving it in people's faces. I'm going to be doing it really discreetly. Uh, hopefully. Okay. You know. Now I want you to keep in mind. Okay. The, um, uh, let's see. What is that? I forgot what the, uh, all right. Where is it? Come here. Come here. I'm trying to find the, uh, you know, I had those written down too. I need to find the the axioms for the uh, cyber papacy thirty two. So the the uh, notepad that you have up thirty two, please. I have the stats somewhere. Let me see. Yeah. Well, okay. The notepad the uh, the the pad that you've got is probably a tech twenty five. Yeah, it is. It says okay. so. Oh, my notes. Okay. All right. And uh, and then, of course, for Core Earth, you know that if you fail using that, you're going to uh, you're going to disconnect. So, yeah. Uh, so it's a tech 23. Uh, Core Earth is tech 23. So, yeah, but this is the the uh, I, I mean, anybody can take a photo on an iPhone. I'm not trying to do anything <laughs> at Core Earth. Oh, wait a minute. You, you know, are Core Earth. Yes. You can't disconnect from Core Earth while you're in Core Earth being a Core Earther. It just That's doesn't good. work that way. So you, um, so here's what I want you to do then. If I will G really... Give me two evidence analysis tests. All right. And it doesn't matter what the target number is. Just give me two evidence analysis tests. There's one. Okay, so okay, so that's a twelve with a result of nine and a result of twelve. Okay. Uh so ten, twelve, uh ginger, peaches, 
one each. Okay, so um, so that's for later. Okay, if you actually go to do something, the the tests are already out of the way. Um, so then, I know what you did. I know what uh, Mo and and Dogfight were doing. Now, Chris. Well, since we all have kind of have come to the consensus that we may be dealing with a werewolf, mm -hmm. I'll probably at, I'll probably start going off to see if I can find anything that's sharp and silver. <laughs> go back into the hotel lobby and spend money. Sounds like there you go. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Um. Okay. Oh, also, that guy oh, wow. we met in New York. So, we seem to know a lot about werewolves so, and stuff. So, speaking of which, we probably still do have the ID um, and our passports from our trip to France. So I, I have one of Mo and Chris and myself. Um. Uh. As I. I was okay. I was about, kind of about to say it was That's like true. all the while I'm contemplating, do werewolves get affected by holy weapons and does my uh, you know, inquisitor's sword count as you know count as a you know holy weapon? Well, I guess you, we'll find out if we actually find one. Actually, <laughs> I was gonna say you don't know, but you do have resources for finding out. And the phones in Core Earth still connect to other phones in Core Earth. Now, Robert, what were you saying? Well, I was just going to try and I, I, once once I discovered that once I realized there was nothing to be found um, in the air, um, we should probably uh, we should probably uh, uh, find out uh, about this uh, this uh, vagrant and and get uh, get his take on things. See if he knows anything. Um, yeah, he's that, that's that's a good idea for our, our next step. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, do we all want to go? Do just a couple of us want to go? Well, uh, now I, I okay. Let me let me kind of pause things for a bit. You've got a couple of things that you can do. Uh, I don't know if you want to split resources to do it though. Um, going and seeing the vagrant. If, uh, and in fact, you, you go to ask the lieutenant there and, and he says, yes, he is presently locked up because, uh, we, we caught, we, we had him in the hospital. And then when he was done with the hospital, he was cited for, uh, various legal things. Plus we're trying to keep him safe just in case the assailants come back. So he is there you go. at the jail right now. Okay, so that's one one thing. The other thing I just mentioned is that the phones still work. So, so what do you guys want to do? So we could call somebody as far as like a, um, a Delphi Council resource? Mm -hmm. uh, possibly. Um, uh, uh, actually, what did I want to do, guys, is please stick together. Why don't we uh, do what we can to assist this mom and pop operation with their work and see we, <laughs> why don't we ask their take on this poor lady's death. See what we can find out from their expert opinion. And then let's go interview the, the, uh, the, vagrant. the, the vagrant fella. And then, uh, um, and, and while we're in transit, we can make any calls if we have to. Sounds like a plan. That sounds like a plan. I like that. Okay, so the uh, the police chief uh, or police lieutenant walks over to speak with the forensic scientist, um, and it's in Indonesian, so you can attempt to to make a language roll if you want to, but I'm not sure how well you would uh, how how much you would understand. Um, and Is then Indonesian based on French, uh, I'll make it. I, I'm the only linguist of the group. Uh, yeah. Oh wait, Chris has the translator. Oh, that's right. That's right. I keep forgetting about that. Okay, so, you know, his tra the translator has kind of been going off when it's been an alternate language or something like that. So the, the lieutenant talks to his forensic guy. The forensic guy has a, you know, has a, a, a thermometer and has stuck it in a place, uh, stuck it into the, in between a couple of ribs to, to get temperature. Um, and he confirms that, she, that the maid was killed about 2.30 in the morning. Um, uh, but why nobody was awakened uh, with screaming, he doesn't know, unless it was something that was really fast. Then he goes and puts away his, cleans and th puts away his thermometer and rolls the woman over. Her face 
her eyes are wide open and just absolutely filled with just her face is filled with fright. Um, and you can see uh, across uh, from her left breast all the way down to the right side of her body, she has four long claw marks that went very deep. They broke ribs. Okay, she's got ribs that are actually sticking out of her chest. She is horrific. I need all of you to make a fear check. And the fear uh, check is just for, for like, um, uh, uh, mainly keeping your stomach and stuff like that. Um, and it'll be based off of either willpower or spirit. Okay. I don't have that, so do this. I'm going to use a card. Okay. Which is... Low power, so, you know, get up to eight. Okay. All right. Who's next? Mm, I'll go. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm oh. trying to go. Uh, so my result was a twenty-five. Uh, yeah, you remember your Adinos days uh, pre-Chicago very, very well. <laughs> Um, at this particular moment, and all of the blood and gore and nastiness that you used to see when you were there. Uh-oh, who disconnected? Uh, uh, Ginger. Ginger disconnected. Yeah. Okay, well, Chris, um, let's see. Chris, Chris, Chris is looking a little wobbly, and I'm sitting there for a second, and I look at him and said, said, you know what? I am beginning to get a little hungry. Why don't we go for breakfast while they're finishing this up? <laughs> Oh, that's just that's nasty. Just, <laughs> that is nasty. Okay, Ginger's I'm back. Sorry. I, I just, I, I just had the cat step on my keyboard, and, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that I, I, I was momentarily uh, frozen and interrupted, so I could not roll. Oh well, that's okay. You can go ahead and roll now. We haven't gone anywhere, so. Uh, okay, so, so dogfight. Dog or kind of look a little bit queasy. Mo, like, great Caesar's <laughs> ghost. Oh uh, yeah. How is Mo's like asking? It's like, how about we go get breakfast? I'm yeah, I'm getting kind of hungry now that you mentioned it. Chris. No, 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 no. You, you, you two guys are going to end up uh, at least dry heaving if nothing else. Um, but Ginger, go ahead and roll. Oh, nice. Very nice. Okay, you're good to go. You and Mo kind of stand there and go, uh-huh, yep, mm-hmm. Uh, Mo, because of the brutality that he faced in the living land, and you, because you're uh, 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 a you firefighter. a lot worse. Yeah, yeah I've, seen probably... burn. I've seen burn victims. Yeah. Oh, God, so, okay, so uh, for Chris and Dogfight, uh, how do you two uh, uh, deal with your, your little failure there? What happens? I, yeah, it sounds like pretty good. I'm kind of like I, 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 I turned like pale white and uh, <laughs> made Caesar's <laughs> ghost. Yeah, you're, yeah, I you're might, right, DF. <laughs> yeah, I might. I no. might have, him, have him sit down with his head between his knees. Breathe, breathe. You know. What about you, Chris? Like you do rookies who are gonna faint. Ugh. I just kind of turn around and just like deep breath in, deep breath out, <laughs> and we're prepped. And we're prepped. This is totally healthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't uh, don't be throwing up on the crime scene now. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Um, all right. So, uh, do you guys, since you did just wake up, uh, the, I mean, the police lieutenant is like that. That's really all I've got for you. The, uh, the, uh, mm -hmm, coroner, uh, slash forensic scientist goes and gets a, a body bag and a, 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 uh, uh, rolling bed out of, out of the back of his van. Um, and really slash really, really slash really, really Thanks. what? <laughs> really slash really slash in there did you <laughs> i'm lost what are you guys talking about slash pause yeah. slash pause yeah. mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry yeah okay that was just really bad <laughs> it, all right <laughs> yeah, that was just really bad i finally got it oh so, hey guys, um, the uh, Check oh, the quorum. this gallows humor is pretty sick to answer, um, uh, uh, Peach's question from earlier, 
uh, she does have a small silver cross in the left hand that was underneath her body. Uh, the coroner uh, slash forensic scientist dude <clears throat> uh, bags that and bags any other evidence, including the hair, the tuft of hair from her right hand, and uh, and and goes to put her uh, onto the gurney and into the van. What is an Adino's sense of smell like? Are you asking if I'm a bloodhound? No. <laughs> Can you call one to sniff the hair? I don't know. I mean, maybe. You know, I can see if there's any around. Well, there there are dogs like there are anywhere else in the world all over the island, especially since this island actually has like rainforests and a lot of trees and, you know, stuff like that in it. So, yeah, it, uh, it never gets too hot here. So there's uh, quite a lot. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, all I can do is, you know, like, you know, talk to the dog, and dogs aren't generally noted for their deep philosophical views on things. <laughs> this is true, but it can what, recognize, what exactly the, you want me to it find can recognize the smell of a dog, and it can recognize the smell of a cat, and it can recognize the smell of man. So the hair, um, would it notice if it were animal or man? Yeah. Uh. And, uh, when it, and what are you going to do when it says yes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we already well, know it's are, going to say in. yes. Yes, canine. <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that will certainly <laughs> confirm what we know. <laughs> yeah, what we suspect. Um, and uh, perhaps it can catch a scent of the killer before it's washed away in any summer rain or uh, tropical uh, rain. I'll tell you what, give me a minute. Let me see what I can do. Uh, 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 I, 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 I whispered this to you while they're taking the temperature and all of that. And, you know, hopefully um, we can engage some finer senses other than ours since we are not detectives. Mm -hmm. Good point. All right. All right. Uh, I, I, I go and I, I try to... Like you know, call up a canine, which I can uh, uh, make some sort of like um, uh, make some sort of connection with. It. The problem is, is commune with animals does not give me a lot. I don't know that I'm going to be able. I, I need the other one to really be able to uh, communicate effectively. Communicate effectively. Uh, so let's see, commune with animals. Um, I'm opening your character sheet here, so if you see things widening up, don't freak out. Speaking with beasts uh, is a rare but ancient tradition in certain cultures. Most animals are very simple-minded and can only communicate basic ideas. Most can only count to about three and cannot understand human speech. They can communicate whether people they encountered spoke happily, calmly, angry, etc. However, the miracle affects all animals of the same type in range, all wolves, all ravens, etc., Commune with animals doesn't summon the beasts, however. They must be present or attracted somehow, such as by the call animals miracle. And the range on that is 33 feet. Um, I'm going to say that unless you go out looking for um, an, a dog somewhere, you're likely not going to, to find. Um, yeah. Not even with a hamburger or something? <laughs> oh, there are plenty of strays all over the place, but strays often get their senses beat up pretty good. Yeah, well, even the the most beat up dog would have senses a thousand times better than a human's. Uh, yeah, yeah, they can. So, does Mo want to go out looking for? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's about the best Mo can contribute. So, so, so then, so then, let me kind of let me kind of uh, break things up a little bit. Who who is going to make a call to the Delphi Council? You I will, to, Chris. Or yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, Dogfight is brand new to the team, so he probably doesn't know a whole lot about the Delphi Council just yet, except for what you guys have told him. All right, then, fine. I guess I won't. Okay. Sorry. Chris, Chris probably do it. That's okay. He had the question about the sword. Okay. Then 
are you all are going to basically be sticking together, or is somebody going to yes. go and talk to the vagrant? I, I thought we were going to be like basically kind of like traveling. We, we we'll take a cab to the uh, to to the police station and talk to the vagrant and make the call on the way. Okay, okay, that might just do the trick. Um, there you go. Okay, so uh, taxi yep. to the uh, police station. Make uh, call. I'm, I'm going to be doing the dog. I guess I'll I, I guess I'll, I'll be off on my own for a few minutes, and I'll meet them at the police station. Oh, okay. Okay. Make call to DC and then, uh, yeah. That's probably it. All right. Because you might be distracting in the police office. Now here's, here's a question for you. What are you taking with you, Mo, for a dog? If you get one to talk to you, to commune with you. Uh, I, I, I go over to the, uh, people that are doing the, 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 the corner. Uh huh. And I, and I say, hey, can you, uh, hey, uh, can you spare a couple of, uh, a couple of strands of that hair there? I, I'd be able to get some ID on it here from some local sources, but um, uh, okay, that you probably don't want to know about uh, just just a couple. Yeah, if you can put them in an envelope, that would be awesome. Both of them are kind of backed up against the van. They both ignored you when they were coming in. They were concentrating on getting pictures of the scene. Well, I, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess the, I guess the woman with the the, the wife with the the uh, camera uh, wouldn't be terribly surprised after a few seconds. She probably saw you in her lens, and and maybe tinkled a little bit, and then and then, uh, you know, out of curiosity, kind of got closer. But the husband <laughs> hasn't seen you yet because he's been busy. So, you oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Hi, hi. I'm uh, I, I'm Captain Mo Gonzalez, uh, U.S. Rocket Ranger Corps. Do you extend uh, a claw? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, going so well. Your acquaintance. Uh, it's, uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, cigar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So you you go and address these two, uh, and I presume I that you're going to ask the them. Role. I, I well, I presume that you're going to ask them if you can take the 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 tuft of hair that the maid had in her hand. Oh uh, yeah, just just a few strands is really all I need. Uh, n- enough for an animal to get a scent off of. Okay. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, because I don't want to take the rest. You'll need that for lab analysis and all. You know, just. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, so let's see. Persuasion, I believe, is based on charisma. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, first off, let's see if I've got persuasion. You do uh, not. No, I do not. <laughs> well, what's your right. what's your charisma? Eight. Eight is not bad. Um, no. Okay. I try and try and roll a charisma test now. Keep in mind, this is non-skilled, so you can only re-roll on tens. Yep. Yeah. And of course, uh-huh. your target number is a ten. So, oh, that's really nice. So that gives you bravo, bravo. That gives you a bonus of plus four. So that's twelve. <laughs> the woman's holding up her camera, and I say, like, "Oh yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I'll, I'll pose for a picture. I put her arm around her husband. <laughs> <laughs> give, give a thumbs up. <laughs> her husband is frozen. His his arms are straight out. He is holding the little pouch with the hair in it because he huh? just finished uh, closing it up, but uh, not pouch the the Ziploc bag." Uh, because he just finished closing it up, but he, he kind of starts to look up at you and his eyes are huge, you know, even though you're wearing your red, white, and blues and your boots. And (laughs) so, yeah, the, the wife just kind of haphazardly takes a picture and then she speaks to her husband and, and you hear the translation out of, uh, out of the armband that Chris is wearing. And she says, you're an idiot. You look awesome. This is going to be great on the website. And he just kind of snaps back to her all of a sudden. He's like, you're not posting that. <laughs> <laughs> like social media to snap people out of whatever funk they're in. Yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Uh, so um, he, he kind of looks up at you and, and slides from underneath your arm uh, as best as he can. And he's like, you wanted what again? 
Uh, just a couple of strands of the air uh, in, in something that I can like carry. Uh, try to not to contaminate the scent. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get an animal to scent off of them. And uh, uh, maybe I can like, you know, find something out that way. Uh, he, he, I look at her. You want a picture with me? <laughs> <laughs> his, uh, his left eyebrow lowers and his right one goes up. And he's like, you're a lizard. How are you speaking so intelligently? I told you, I'm from Chicago. <laughs> well, I mean, not originally. I migrated to Chicago, and not this Chicago. It was a completely different Chicago. But um, so all but, of a sudden, uh, his as his you go on, you start losing him more and more. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you're I was like, here, I'm, I'm from here, but not really because it's you know it's not there there, but you know it's there. You know, <laughs> and, the... now, and and you have to remember that this is a nihilite saying this, so the origin story gets grander and grander <laughs> the further and further he goes along. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I, I was born a simple lizard. Uh, in a, in, in, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I was, I was hatched in a small clutch. <laughs> <laughs> He, uh, he, he, his, his right eyebrow impossibly goes even higher and he says, Oh, you're one of those Chicago lizards. And he, he goes to, to turn around to the, uh, to the stretcher that the rolling stretcher that the, the I'm lady is not on done yet. <laughs> because, because he's, uh, his, his kit is actually at her feet and he opens it back up and grabs another, um, uh, Ziploc bag and kind of opens it and says, can you hold this for a second? Uh, yeah. Okay. And he opens his and grabs a little comb out of there or, or a little brush and he kind of rolls a couple of hairs off on it and Ziplocs his bag and picks out some tweezers and takes the hair off of the brush and puts it into your little bag. And he says, I don't need them back. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's great. I'm looking around. Anybody you know of have any dogs around here? <laughs> Speaking of that, is there a good place for breakfast? <laughs> um, the the police lieutenant uh, um, who is is kind of trying to keep his laughter in uh, at the corner and his wife, um, the forensic scientist and his wife, he's like, uh, yeah, the this is in the hotel here is one of the best restaurants on the island. Um, I'll I'll go in and and uh, see about preparing the uh, the vagrant for an interrogation. I was about to say, you're preparing him for breakfast? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he's got to eat, too. <laughs> uh, he probably eats better in jail than he has out on the street. <laughs> Maybe not here. All right. In America, oh, yeah, he would be. My friends, if we've got things kind of wrapped up as to what you want to do, I'm going to recommend taking a few minutes uh, for a... All right. Robert, does that mean you're back? I'm front, too. Oh, well, okay. Uh, wise guy, I'm telling you. All right, so let's go ahead and, and uh, get back to what we were working on. So, uh, Mo, I'm going to take care of, uh, of Peaches, Chris, and Dogfight first. Go right okay? ahead. So, between you three, who is actually going to make the call to the Delphi Council? I thought Chris was. Chris or... Well, that's what I was thinking, you know. Because but... you had the question, right? It was either Chris or not me. <laughs> <laughs> it was either Chris or not me. Gotcha. Um, okay, so Chris, you go to dial up Houston, and, and they answer uh, uh, basically uh, something like, Delphi Council, how may I direct your call, please? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no experience with this kind of thing, so help. What, are um, you asking somebody else to help you out? Uh, no, I'm talking out of game. I was like, just, just I have the help no line. idea what I'm doing on this. Quinn Sebastian and put us and put it and make it snappy. That's what you say. Quinn Sebastian and make it snappy. <laughs> You've met him. He knows you. Or you know him. I'm sorry, Quinn Sebastian who, uh, is not here today. The France. 
Hey, uh, and, and, and here would be the response. Quinn Sebastian is not in the office right now, but if you'd like to leave a message, wait for the beep. <laughs> no. Wait a minute. Is, is there some kind of storm night hotline for us or something like that? We, we need a hotline. Okay, so um, let's do this. Uh, the operator hears dogfight over, uh, you know, over the open line, and she says, "Oh, you're having your storm nights, and you're having an issue." Yes. Okay. Um, let me know what your issue is, and I'll try and direct you in the in the right place. Put you in the right place. Uh, we think we might be dealing with the werewolf. Uh, and I have a question. I have a inquisitor sword. Does that count as a holy weapon? And do holy weapons affect werewolves? Um, sir, I've never encountered one of those. Yeah, uh, I figured. Uh, do you know where I could I get that kind of you, questions answered? Well, you might be able to get answers for both of your questions from research. So I'm going to go ahead and send you over to research. Have a nice day. Thank you. So after about uh, after about three seconds, you've got elevator music that comes on, and you're waiting for probably about fifteen more seconds, and somebody answers the phone. This is Jim. What do you want? Okay, this absolutely cannot possibly be. Uh, Who's talking first? Yeah, who's talking? Who's talking? I, I was talking out of character. Uh, basically, there's no way in hell this could possibly be a government operation. It was only 15 seconds on hold. Not a chance <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh. All right, change seconds to minutes. There? Uh, uh, there you go. There you go. You're No, it, actually, there's not really that many storm nights that would call in. So it is kind of a government operation, but, uh, but the Delphi Council has some autonomy from the government. So let, let's just do that, uh, especially since there's a lot of sure. other governments and agencies around the world that would not trust the Delphi Council with a spoon, let alone information, um, if they were actually attached to the federal government. So there you go. So uh, anyway, do we have that cleared up now? Can we get on with whatever it is you've got? I'm a busy man. Come on. Pro proceed. Okay. So I asked the same kind of. Okay, but who's I dinging around? Who's dinging around? Oh, I'm sorry. That was me. Yeah, shut off I'm your microphone. <laughs> My bad. I tell the guy the same thing I told the receptionist. Oh, okay. Uh, he says werewolves, werewolves, werewolves. Hang on a second. And where can they be found? Uh, huh? What? You think? Uh, as I said, we think we're dealing with a werewolf. Oh, okay. That that's what I thought. But you've got like two other people that are trying to talk on the phone with you at the same time. Oh, yes, one it's person. Quite annoying. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you hear him kind of partially cover the phone enough so that your ears don't get blasted out when he yells, "Reginald, get up here!" And uh, um, he's like, "All right, I'm gonna put the phone down on the desk." Uh, my buddy Reggie is gonna gonna come and and pick up the phone in a minute. You can tell him you got a werewolf problem. Understood. Understood. Okay. About uh, probably a minute and a half later, uh, and you're not listening to any hold music or anything like that. But you do hear voices in the background. You can't really tell what they're saying. Um, but uh, uh, a, a kind of a nasally voice. Uh, is heard on the other end of the air uh, in in you know about like I said a minute and a half. Hi, I'm I'm Reggie. Um, um, Jim says you said something about werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pardon me, I've got a cold. At parties. Uh, <laughs> I have a cold. Sure, sure. What do you want to uh, know? So. I have. I want to know what are the weaknesses. Is does silver one? Does silver actually work? And two, do holy weapons work? 
it depends on it depends on if you're talking about a a movie werewolf or a a Rorsch werewolf. I say we're dealing with an or Rorsch werewolf, the well, real one. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, hang on. You hear the phone uh, kind of touches the desktop real quick, and then you're, <laughs> you know, this guy's cleaning out his schnoz. He says, picks up the phone. Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, um, an Aurora's werewolf we don't know a whole lot about, but everything that you hear in the movies does not necessarily matter to the reality guys. Yeah, yeah, I figured. So you you can try. <laughs> you can try what's, what you see in the movies, but don't expect it to work. I got, you got any other questions? Yeah, what does work? Like I said, I, I don't know. Try silver. Uh, some stories talk about wood uh, in in not only vampire, but, but in werewolf hearts. You could try a silver dog chain. Uh, that might work. Sorry. Uh... Other than that, you're you're kind of on your own. We don't know a whole lot yet. Okay, I'm starting to get dizzy from doing this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he's real annoying, this guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, keep uh, it up. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, power through it. Uh, thank you for all your help, Veggie. Uh, well, I guess I'll try to figure it out on my own. Bye. Okay. Bye. Oh, you're gonna ask he about the, the phone. Of your sword. Just as you're saying that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, but uh, oh, see, they don't know anything. It, <laughs> I might as well ask an actual priest on this. I turn around. Yes. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> yeah except, I, what, I, what is Mo gonna know about werewolves, really? He said he wanted to ask an actual priest. I mean, yeah. uh -huh. I was about the sword. It's like, does this seem like a holy weapon to you? Well, let me see. It. Ooh. Uh, no, let's it's see. a dead thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But Mo, Captain Mo Gonzalez doesn't necessarily have that hang up. Yeah. Mm. So let me pop open Captain Mo here. Let's see. What would. Oh, pardon me. What would that go under? Um, faith to tell if it's actually a holy weapon? That's not bad. You've got a 16 faith. Holy crap. Um, remember, you it's guys can I only do. go to a maximum of five unless you get the uh, the a, a proper um, uh, perk to go with it. So I know. <laughs> yeah, roll faith, man. All right. Thud. You're kidding me. <laughs> um, you're holding the weapon, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm no, I know, so. no. I'm just showing it to him. Like I'm well, holding he, it out. He is not uh, going to be able to examine it unless he's holding it. Uh, yeah, I was, I was trying to assess it, so I'm, I'm like, you know, trying to give it a once over. Okay. Yeah. That is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay all right uh mr nile empire let's uh let, let's see what uh what your your uh yeah spirit level is uh my spirit is 12 okay that that's your spirit axiom uh oh my spirit axiom yeah i didn't pop uh, up i had your sheet axiom pop up. is 18 your spirit axiom is an 18 uh, spirit from the Nile Empire, or not the Nile Empire, the Cyber Papacy. Uh, I believe that's page 32. Is 16. Um, okay. All right. You do not, uh, 
disconnect. Oh, whoo. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, wait, no. what is Nile Empire? What is Nile Empire? Uh, uh, th- that was 12, right? You said 12 for a spirit? Spirit or 18. 18. 18. Okay. No, you, you do not disconnect. You're very, very lucky in that regard. Um, but you look at it and you're pretty certain you could not tell what kind of weapon that is. Okay. Uh, you're not sure. Hmm? I hand it back to him and I say, no, man, it's just a sword. <laughs> no, you said, I have no idea what this is. If you no, say it's I a said, sword, it's a sword. It's a sword. You know, it, it's a sword. It looks like it's got some fancy wires. In it. Um, you know, it, it came from the cyber papacy. I mean, I, I think they just call everything that's got wires in it, like spiritual. Or powered. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So as far as you can tell, it doesn't appear to be magical in or spiritual or any kind of a holy weapon or anything like that of any sort. Yeah, yeah I think it, I think it's just one of them fancy dancy power sorty things. <laughs> Say that again? Uh, <laughs> okay. So um yeah, there, there's nothing. Oh, wait a minute. He couldn't hand it to you because you're out looking for a dog. Uh, oh. Well, you're in the car now, uh, and you can start from the police station. How's that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So you you call the uh, the the Delphi. You called the Delphi Council, and Reggie couldn't help you at all. But was that actually the question you were trying to ask? Yeah, and that was okay. All right, so you you guys pull up to the police station, and uh, uh, the lieutenant, who was in the driver's seat, of course, gets out, and he invites all of you in. And uh, Mo, yes, sir. What do you do? You just take off after the dog, or you excuse yourself, or yeah, I just excuse myself. I say, all right, guys. So I'll probably just creep this guy out. So I'm going to go looking <laughs> for a dog. While well, y'all talk to him, and uh, how does he check to see if there's a K nine unit at the the station? I'll go. I'll start there, and then see what That's and see where bad. that okay. see where that goes. And uh, y'all y'all go actually talk to the guy. Okay. All right. Um, well, since we've had that, I'm going to go ahead and, and deal with Mo for just a second. Um, the lieutenant kind of points you in the right direction. He says, uh, "Go down to the sergeant's desk." Have them take you back to our our little canine core. We don't we don't have a whole lot, but we do have to do drug sniffing for people coming in from uh, from other countries. So once they arrive here, all right, all right, okay, yeah, you, you yeah. Go. I'll be glad to do that. I'm okay, sure that sergeant will be glad to help me. So. Oh, the the desk <laughs> sergeant is is he's he's snide. Uh, and I don't know how to be snide, but um, uh, he's a very snide individual, and he looks at you and says, what kind of day are you having? Long. Uh, point me towards your canine unit. Why would I do that? You you know uh, the I, lieutenant's name, so you I, could... Yeah, I do, but <laughs> as, as I loom over his desk... <laughs> 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 and, and, and I'm suddenly looking very large and very menacing as I'm like, as I'm like, why would you want to prolong the conversation we'll have if you don't any longer than necessary? <laughs> he stands up. He is, he is about two feet shorter than you are, but he's about six inches wider and <laughs> just built of muscle. And he's like, you're right. What's not. And he walks around from behind the desk and he says, well, Lizard, 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 come on. And <laughs> kind of lead you back. Is that an old commercial? Huh? It's an old talk about commercial. Here, lizard, lizard, lizard. Lizard, lizard. Yeah, I, re- I remember that now. No, that's not what I was trying to do, but that's funny. Uh, okay, so he uh, he leads you back to a fenced-in area. It's got a couple of little covered uh, porticos, and there are a couple of dogs out there. They immediately get up. 
there's there's like four dogs back there plus a handler just one and they immediately get up and come to the edge of their their cages and just rawr, 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 they want to rip you a new one <laughs> put out my cigar and I, I get down on one knee and i rub my hands together and i'm like yes it fellas come on come on come on let's everybody calm down uh, <laughs> The uh, the desk sergeant goes to the other end where the uh, where the the uh, handler is and says something to him in Indonesian and and uh, you notice a, a very strange resemblance between the two of them especially when the other one stands up he's uh, narrow at the waist and extraordinarily wide at the shoulders just like his brother yeah. <laughs> But he seems to be a little bit more straight-faced, and uh, the sergeant turns around and walks out, and he says, good luck, man. Uh, luck's not necessary when Lanala's in. Uh, when Lanala. who's involved? Lanala, the great goddess Lanala. Please come, sit down. Uh, I'll teach you something. Uh, no. Okay, yeah, no, no, that needs to stop. <laughs> He's uh, like, I'm not that curious, and you're not that cute. Bye. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you're you're lost there, partner. Uh, how about you, little fellas? Y'all know Lenata. Y'all are close. Uh, now, and I, I, I start, I, I start like casting my my uh, commune with animal spell on dogs. Okay. All right. And, and the the uh, the handler is looking at you and he sees you kind of close your eyes and he's, you're starting to work with your hands and stuff like that. And, uh, and he's like, Hey, what are you doing? I'm talking to the dogs. I told you I could teach you something. Nobody can talk to dogs. No, he, do, he doesn't have that. Uh, he's, he's got that, uh, like an Indonesian accent, but he's huge. Okay. He's almost like Polynesian instead of Indonesian. And, uh, mm. Of course we can. All we have to do is learn to listen. Like this one here. <laughs> he cocks his head off to the side, and, and, and the dogs seem to follow him. Um, and the barking ceases. Uh, go ahead and, and, and roll. Are you trying to get all four of them involved? Uh, it says it affects all of the same animal within range. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go so, ahead and, uh, and make your roll. I can't call the animals. Uh, but they're there. Spend a You're going to spend well, a possibility, on. huh? I was to say, what's my total? Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, I spend a possibility. Oh, I'm not smoke. looking back in front of this guy after all that. Okay. All right. <laughs> I can't say that I blame you. Okay, I need to kind of read through the commune with animals. Oh, I don't want to make a roll. I need to read through commune with animals. Oh, here we go with the roll 20 slowdown. Yeah, I can't click. I can't like click my character for the po possibility thing because I'm not on this level with the maps. Huh? What do you mean? Oh, your your token is not here. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Hang on. Let me uh, let me go grab some tokens. I wasn't certain I would need. Uh, I would need them straight away. Okay. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? I could just do that with the... <laughs> okay, I'm going to put you guys out in the ocean because I can. Okay, hang on. There's Chris. Bam. Okay. Mo. Dogfight. All right. And Penny. Okay. All right. So now so, I can... And a possibility. Now, wait, 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 wait. Don't do that just yet. Um, let me get the tracker up, the turn tracker, and I can kind of get you guys all on it. Uh, at turn. At turn. At turn. I had completely forgotten about doing this sort of thing. And at turn. Okay. So now your last die roll was what? A two. A two, so let me edit that. Two. And okay, now you can click on your token and spend your possibility. All right, clicked on token, spend possibility, submit. 
Okay, so that's a total of 18. So that's not bad. And as a result of 12. A result of so 12. That, so that's going to succeed. Okay, so it says type of animal, not type of dog. So all four of the dogs are, are pretty much there and can suddenly understand you. Mm -hmm. And you them. Mm -hmm. What do you want to ask? All right. All right, fellas. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's it. That's it. Uh, 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 open up their cages, man. Let, 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 let them out. Uh, 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 they'll tear you to pieces. Oh, don't you worry about these little fellas. All right. Isn't that right, guys? Yeah. And, and they're all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me out. I'm tired of being in the cage. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, he's like, okay, it's your funeral. So he, he goes and opens the cages and lets the dogs out. And they all, like you said, they come around you and are kind of hopping on your leg and tails are wagging all over the place. And it's just like they're not trained at all. See, that's the way it is. Oh, that a good dog. Uh, <laughs> Y'all are a mighty pack, a mighty pack. Uh, you're an impressive pack. Lanala is proud of you all. Uh, Who's uh, Lanala? <laughs> Uh, you know, Lanala, every time you sniff the wind, every time you see a, a squirrel run by, that's Lanala. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she is everything and everywhere. But I have a question. Uh, uh, yeah. do, do, you, do you recognize this scent? And could you follow it? Okay, so you, you go and open up the pouch. Mm -hmm. And and each of them in turn kind of being pushy about it, go and smell it once, and they kind of work their way around you, and they go and smell it twice, and three of the four dogs, the not the largest dog, but the three smaller dogs, um, kind of shake their their uh, you know their nose pad back and forth uh, a couple of times, and they're like, <laughs> I've smelled that. Well, well, the probably the the middle sized dog is like, I've smelled that. Uh, he he goes back to the pouch and smells it a third time. He's like, yeah, yeah, I've smelled that. Um, what do you want with the guy? Uh, 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 we're hunting him. We're hunting. tracking him. Oh. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. They're dogs. They understand that. <laughs> um, I'm, I, I'm not sure I could help you. It was about two and a half months ago that, that I first smelled this. And it was somebody coming in from out of state. That's an oddly um, large amount of information for a dog, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. One of them is like, well, I suppose I could tell you about the... Yeah, <laughs> uh. 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 if, if I found a trail, could you track this scent? Um... I suppose I could, but good luck with getting us out. Oh, don't you worry about that. Oh. <laughs> there, there, little fellas. All right, anybody want to play ball? <laughs> Conversation goes out the window. Me, play, play, play. Squirrel? Play, play. Okay. Play. So is that all you? Ball. I don't have one. I pull out a hand grenade. Here we go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, you pull out the hand grenade. I don't, I don't have any hand grenades. No. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. Kidding. Oh. Uh, but, but I find something, and I, and I play with them for a little while. And the okay. entire time, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the uh, to the guy going, 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 if you're if you're the kennel master, you'd think you'd want to uh, want to be able to like you know to control your charges better. Uh, talk to them, <laughs> understand them. Lanala can help you with this. <laughs> uh, he says, "I'm not interested in any of that. I just handle the dogs." And the dogs all look at him for a second, like, <laughs> and then go back to playing. Uh. Okay, so. Uh, was that pretty much all you wanted to ask, or do you need a few minutes to think of something else? No, no, no. I, I honestly, I don't. I don't think that I could really get much more out of dogs. I mean, they're they're, well, um, they're, they're not intelligent per se. So uh, <laughs> they, 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 they've smelled it before, and that they might could track it if I could like get them on the scent. Was all yeah. I. You but, might want to take them to the scene of the fresh crime and see if they still smell it. 
You're not there. You're asleep. Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm going to get with the lieutenant about that later. But uh, um, so, you know, I've, I've kind of been raising dogs like pretty much all my life. Uh, my my first dog that I ever truly owned, Princess. Yes, small dog, itty bitty dog. I actually brought her out of her mom, and she could obey pretty much anything I told her to do. Dogs are a lot smarter than you think. So Yeah, they are. They're pretty clever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Clever. That's that's probably a better description. But uh yeah, dogs are pretty clever. Um so okay. Then in that case, uh uh Peaches, Chris and Dog Fight. Um about the same time Mo is talking to the dogs, you are uh starting into a conversation with um uh with the vagrant he seems to be recovered a little bit from recent drink but you can tell his uh his bandages across the upper right part of his chest and his right shoulder um uh, are still not healing the way that they should so who oh, wants to do uh what well, I'll definitely be. I, I'm. I'm gonna need to talk to him. Um, the. Um. I'm trying to figure out right now whether or not I need to be like going hard on him, or or if I can go like, use a persuasion route. You know, you could always discuss that with your two compatriots that are there with you. Yeah. Plus the lieutenant. Well, I'm. Well, um, I was. I was thinking out around uh, which what skills I had. I thought I had intimid. Oh, okay. They're they're the same, so I can go either right with it. Okay. Um, so I would. So my my intimidation is the same as my uh, persuasion. Uh, persuasion. So we could go either route way with this. Which way do you guys want to go? You can be the good cop and the bad cop. I could be the good cop and the bad cop. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else got a double digit uh, charisma or intimidation? Persuasion. No. Let's see what my. Okay. My, I, I think I might be intimidating, but not much else. Um, okay. Um, no, my intimidate is only nine, but I am skilled in it. Okay. Well, yeah. If we if we need to go that route, we can, you you can be the bad cop. I'll be the good cop. <laughs> Do you guys need a few minutes to think through two or three questions that you want to try and ask? <laughs> no. Yeah, I, we need to tell, ask him to walk us through that that night that he was attacked, um, and ask him. Uh, if uh, he... Yeah, the the only thing will the only thing will work out is like a a a, a signal like along the lines of because you know the good cop bad cop routine is a is is an old is is an oldie but a goodie so it's like yeah um if I say I get a, I'm gonna need to get a cup of coffee that's that's the that's the signal for you to 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 go at him hard. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll step out of the room. <laughs> all right, Ginger. Uh, all right, you need to go get a cup of coffee and maybe even offer to give him one. And then I lay into him. There you go. There you go. That's what we'll do. All right. All right. So, so okay. Yeah, so let me let me kind of set the scene real quick. Um, he's behind steel gray bars. Okay, painted steel gray bars, and he is sitting on on his cot. Uh, his uh, his elbows are resting on his knees, and uh, and he's basically kind of holding his forehead and and rubbing it. Uh, you can tell that he is going through some sort of withdrawals. Uh, he's shaking a little bit, and his uh, his flesh is an unusual white. And that's how you see the the bandages on his uh, upper chest, upper right chest, and his right shoulder. I I, I asked the I, I walk up and ask the uh, the uh, the sergeant or the uh, the the captain woman. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I can I can I can you open the door and let me go in there and talk to him? Uh, I'm oh, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm safe. He uh he signals for for the three of you to kind of kind of step back out the door for a second because this is this is almost like a cell block so there's a a steel and glass door uh reinforced glass oh. door that you guys can can go through so he he opens it up and he 
walks halfway through it himself before ushering you guys out. He says, okay, look, this guy is really rattled. I've never seen him like this, and I've known him all my life. He Ooh, is. What's he in jail for instead of a hospital? He's in jail so we can protect him. He can't afford the hospital. Okay. So kind of kind of take it easy on him. You're likely to get more flies with honey in this instance. I, I, I got you, man. I got you. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of him. Okay. Now, obviously, you worked out your signal about the uh, the, the whole cup of coffee yeah. thing before you even walked in there. So let's just say that he kind of warned you guys while you were talking about the cup of coffee um, that, uh, you know, kind of take it easy. So, mm -hmm. all right. So you open the door and you go back in there and what? Go ahead. Well, I mean, uh, so I, I, I'm I just kind of come in and, hey, man, how you doing? The, the, I, I heard you had a pretty rough night. Uh, you could say that. It, it was actually a morning. It was really, I think it was morning. It was, And he looks at the lieutenant. He's like, it was, it was morning, wasn't it? And the lieutenant just nods. Yes, it was. It was definitely morning. One of my men are dead. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. He's 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 unhappy with the circumstances, but he's not willing to to get really mad at this guy because it's not his fault. So mm. the uh, so you you think there was a monster? I I, I heard that you, you you saw a monster or something like that, right? His head snaps up, and you see abject terror in his features. And he's like, yeah, it was a monster. It was definitely a monster. I've never I seen anything you. like it. But he is, I, he is suddenly very animated. So you've never seen any. You said you've never seen anything like it. You've never, I mean, because you're... I mean, you you've been around. You've been you've been on the streets for a while. You haven't heard anything like this good creeping around. Any, Never, you no know, stories. Never. I, my nightmares aren't this dark. Man. Um. Can I take a look at that? You got know, with I, I, you know the I got a friend of mine. She's she's really good with wounds. Can I take a look at that? Uh, what, what you know what they did to you? He he says, well, um, they told me not to take these off uh, until they came to change them. There's supposed to be a nurse coming any time now to, to change the well, bandages. And as if on cue, um, <laughs> a, a male nurse, <laughs> a male nurse walks into that, that uh, or walks through that uh, reinforced glass and steel door. And uh, and she he is very surprised what's going on here, and the lieutenant says you can you can go ahead and and, and treat Charlie he's okay. Actually, actually, why don't we have our why don't we have our guy do it? Our, our lady, I'm sorry, my apologies, meant uh, to uh, Peaches, to Miss Peaches. Yeah, could we could we could we have our lady do it uh, if you don't mind? Well, the nurse looks at Peaches and he goes, um, "Are you qualified for that?" I, I'm a certified uh, EMT. Oh. Well, then in that case, he hands you his bag. He's like, "I, you got any extra gloves? That's the only thing I'm missing. Uh, I have these. I have my power gloves on. <laughs> well, the... the <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, you don't want to apply those power gloves to that kind of a wound. You'll kill the no, guy. No, um, no. The um, lieutenant's but, like, uh, uh, well, I, I can get you a box. What, what size are your hands? And the, the nurse is like, oh, a large. Yeah, men are large usually. Um, I'm a medium. I'm, I'm an extra large in that case. I just couldn't. There was nothing I could do at work to to help people get through to things because my fingers were already, always in the way. Anyway, so the lieutenant leaves for a second, uh, probably a couple minutes, and we'll bring back a, a box of, uh, of large nitrile gloves. And uh, and he opens them up and, and holds them out for you. There you go. You can use those. Probably need to use them over your power gloves. Because most women are medium or smaller, so yeah. If, that, if that's the only size I have, it'll it'll go over my power gloves just fine. Yeah. So yeah, um, but uh, 
actually for this, I'll fold my power gloves into my belt. Okay. Um, I will wash my hands properly. I will put on gloves. Okay. I will find the 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 sterilizing you uh you know pads and okay. stuff like that. You know the little alcohol wipes and things. Yeah. And the uh and, and wipe down the uh, gauze scissors in which case because because I'll need that to cut the bandages away. Well, yeah. Well, there. I mean, there's uh there's the uh, bandage tape that's all over those. That it generally doesn't rip the skin too bad. So you could probably just uh, loosen the bandage tape that way and apply new stuff.